How important are good manners to you? Is etiquette per se a quaint set of behaviours from the past? Well, my next guest doesn't think so. In fact, it's moved her to rap about it. (coughs) (coughs) Your office is shared with a colleague or two, but all they hear is your coughing and flu. You're standing around, waiting for the lift. But don't just charge in, make a small shift. Your knife and fork are waving in the air. Put them next to your plate. It shows that you care. You're standing on the footpath. Get out of the way. And hang up your iPhone. I don't care what you say. Turn down the music. We don't need to hear it too. And the most important thing, simply saying thank you. Manners are simple and best of all they're free. It's a gentle act of kindness between you and me. It's time to get classy, so let's take stock. That's the word from me, Ita from the block. Well, Ita Buttrose doesn't really need an introduction. She's been a broadcaster, she's edited big newspapers, even bigger magazines, the Australian Women's Weekly, youngest ever editor, back when it was an iconic publication. She's active in the not-for-profit sector and famously she launched... Clio, almost 40 years ago. But today we're going to start with what's okay and what's not, as covered in her 10th book, A Guide to Australian Etiquette, for all occasions, from weddings to work. Welcome back to Life Matters, Ida. Thank you. I have to say, I never thought that you would be a rapper. Well, neither did I, but you never know what you're going to do in life. And, 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 and actually, I never say never, because life constantly takes me by surprise. Thank you. You know, Penguin said, would you like, would you consider? And I said, oh, I don't know. I don't know. I've never done that before. No. All right. I said, all right, I'll have a go. But if it's no good, you can't use it. But I think it turned out all right. It's not the first time you've written about uh, etiquette and manners. How much has changed since the last edition, which I think was 1985? Yes, I, the, the first one I wrote was 85. It was reprinted a few times during the 90s. But I think it's changed quite a lot, really, because we're a much more informal society and and you, we even dress differently when we go to the office these days. But But the fundamentals of how we treat each other really have never changed over the years. But when I look at the style of my earlier book, I was quite... I was quite... Ponzi, I think, might be the word about how I dispensed my advice. You know, you mustn't, you shouldn't, you don't. I, you know, you would have thought I was somewhere up there. I was so prim and proper about it all. So I think even I have relaxed in the way I write about these things now. Have manners always been important to you? Yes, I think. I think. Well, they. I think they are a sign of a of a civilized society, and I think manners really uh, the way we respect one another, the way we treat one another, the courtesy we show, we make allowances for people's shortcomings. Uh, they're, they're very important and they make the world a much nicer place in which to be. Well, I, w- I won't ask for everything, but I will ask what annoys you. And I'll tell you, firstly, what annoys me. I, I get really annoyed when people don't say thank you. So if you open a door or hold a door open for someone or or stand up for someone or, or, or you let someone in when you're driving, and of course many of us are not at our best on the roads, and, that, and they don't give you a thank you or a little wave. That gets me. What gets you? Well, that gets me too. And in fact, in fact, people not saying thank you really get me. Mm. And especially the opening door, the opening door thing. It seems such a trivial thing, doesn't it? But, you know, I was down at the post office and I held the door open. A young man came through reading his mail, came through reading his mail, went past me up the street. And I said, you're welcome. Yes. Oh, 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 he said, thank you. But too late, too late. I mean, what did he think I was? Some sort of doorstopper. I was really cranky about yes, that. Yes, oh, well, I can appreciate that. And, 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 people, and people who don't say thank you in the traffic, you sort of think, I'm not going to do that next time. And then you think, oh, hang on. That makes you as bad as everyone else. You can't go to that. You have to keep maintaining your standards, I think. Actually, what I think is that I wish for a moment that I was uh, Lady Penelope in the, par- in the Thunderbirds. I don't know if you remember the Thunderbirds. And she said, deploy missile, Parker. And he launches a <laughs> missile from the Rolls Royce, destroys whatever. What and I, I, if, I could, if I could only do that, and then they, they get to be alive later. I, I do get very annoyed by it. But do you think um, uh, that some of this is a generational thing? I mean, um, like privacy. So my mother, who's in her 70s, has a very different of concept of privacy 
to mine and mine is different to say my nephews and nieces who are teenagers and in their early 20s I'm wondering if if manners if etiquette are, are a bit like that no, I don't think so. And it concerns me, actually, about how uh, so many of the younger generation are prepared to put myriad details about themselves, mm. their lives, out on social media, uh, social networks. And, and, you, and you know that one day some of these things are going to come back and haunt them because mm. they're telling people they don't know all sorts of things about themselves, which sometimes you should think about this. Do you really want all this out there? And when you're 30 or when you're 35. An unimaginable age if you're 18 uh, yes, or 19. Yes, it seems very old. Uh, how will you react? So I always, I'm, I think that you should always think before you post a message on the social networks. I think you should never post one if you're angry. Never. You have to learn to go and sleep on your anger and then see how you feel in the morning and never, ever if you've had a few drinks. Very unwise. No, well, in, in many cases. Actually, the, the technology... The immediacy of it, the ability to communicate that we've got uh, from, because mobile phones were around in 1985, but but still built like bricks and yeah, expensive great big things suitcases. They were. Yeah, uh, and and now we have texting and emails and Skype too, and those still newish communication technologies, they make it all so instant, don't they? And I think that must have an impact on etiquette and manners. Well, yes, but only because we permit it. You see, if if we all permit it then we're, we're, we're contributing to what I consider to be the breakdown of the way we behave to one another. So you have to suddenly say, no, look, that's not acceptable. Text all you like, Do, you know, certainly. But there are certain times when you must text with a bit more politeness or perhaps even make a phone call. We can communicate in so many different ways, but I think that people actually have a lot of difficulties communicating because a lot of people don't want to talk to anybody anymore. They'd rather text. And and I think this is contributing to the way we're all behaving. You have four grandchildren now. I, I do. Think. Are you teaching them to be perfectly mannered? Or? Well, well, they're very small. You know, the, the eldest one is three yes. and the next one's almost three. But those two three-year-olds, yes, and the 15-month-old and the one-year-old, yes, we do say to them, say please, say ta mm -hmm. for thank you. And, and the three-year-olds, we now say thank you. And sometimes they forget and you say... What are the magic words? And they tell you, yes, if you get these things drummed into you when you're little, I think they remain with you all your life. Do you think we're, we're less good at this? Do you think we're more impolite, that our etiquette is less considerate of other people? It's, it, it's always easy to cast stones, and I'm sure someone could chuck a couple at me, but um, I think some parents have become slack, and we've used that excuse, I'm too busy. Mm. I'm too busy, I haven't got time, I, you know, my timetable, I'm working, I'm this, I'm that. Grandmothers are, are often in the workforce, and you often learn a lot of these things about etiquette and manners from your grandma mm. um, and, and grandpa. Boys learn a lot from their grandfathers. And, and, the, and so those situations have changed, and I think they contribute to it. But I don't, it's a bit like sending your children off to school in the morning without breakfast. I think there are some things you can't do as a parent. I don't care how busy you are. You must give the kids breakfast, and you should teach them manners and how to behave because it's your role. It's what parents are meant to do. Oh, well, I'm not going to argue with that. I suppose I'm just thinking that, you know, after three or four decades of increasingly the media and popular culture telling us it's all about us, it's all about not us, actually, it's all about me. Mm. Um, yeah, I'm that, all right, Jack. <laughs> that's it. So you tend to think, well, I'm in, everyone else is in this movie of my life and uh, it's all about me being empowered and, and doing whatever I want. I'm, I'm not really suggesting people really believe that. But we're kind of encouraged to behave that way, aren't we? But the tragedy of it all is that while you might think that when you're younger, experience tells us who are older that it is never all about you. Mm. And, and, you know, while it might be nice to fleetingly enjoy being yourself, being that person, really you've got to equip yourself with what's to come afterwards. And what comes afterwards is very different to what you're enjoying now at the moment. And so... Perhaps we older people need to share our wisdom and knowledge a little better than we do. But the, the fact of the matter is if we don't say enough is enough, then you'll never change anything. And I don't wish to curb anybody's freedom and I think young people should experiment and have fun and challenge and all those sorts of things. But you still, you always need a set of rules for living. And I think good manners are one of those things that you need.